Most of it's packed up. I just need to put them clothes in a bag. It's 11 o'clock Wednesday morning and in an hour's time, Michaela and her three children are going to be evicted. I didn't actually think they would leave a family on the street. They've been given less than 24 hours notice to leave the hotel they've lived in for eight months so by then, Enfield Council. Yeah, nearly 40 minutes, that's your booking ends. Yeah. I'm calling um, to see if I can get some help from a solicitor. Michaela is desperately trying to get hold of anyone who will help. But time is running out. And as 12 o'clock approaches, the hotel staff keep knocking the door, wanting the room back. You need to come out there and clean it to get in and clean it. I've got nowhere to go. I'll be on the street, literally. We first met Michaela back in July. Despite working, she couldn't find anywhere affordable to rent and the council said there was no social housing available in the area and life in the hotel was taking its toll on her children. Sad and frustrated. It's just hard to live there. The hotel is all Aurora has ever known. Three months since we met, she's now learned to walk, but she has nowhere to go. So the council offered me a two-bedroom property, which wasn't within the area, so it would mean a travel time of anywhere between an hour and a half to two hours to get my kids to school. I could not remove my eldest son from his school. I would need to get permission from his father to change his schools, and his father is not given permission. Um, so I had to reject the offer because it's just not possible. What would the commute to your job be? A minimum of two hours. So by turning that property down, they're effectively saying, we're done with you? Yeah. What are you going to do? I don't know. I've been up all night trying to think of the answers. It's now 12.30, 30 minutes after checkout. The family's whole life was in this room. Now it's in this van. Michaela will have to pay for everything to be taken into storage while she has no idea where they will go next. As Michaela tries to call Enfield Council's housing department on the other side of London, <coughs> Terry and her three children have been living in this tiny studio flat for 10 months. Temporary accommodation provided by Sutton Council, all four of them have been sleeping in this one room, sharing two beds between them. They became homeless due to a relationship breakdown, but three days ago, Terry was told the landlord wants the flat back. Sutton Council have said it's Croydon Council's responsibility to house them, but no one has provided them with anywhere else to go. I cried myself to sleep, to be honest, because I was a bit three kids on the street, like, didn't know what else, to, what else I was meant to do, so I don't really have that many family members here, and they don't have no space, and nor does none of my friends, and I don't want to feel like a burden on everybody else. I'll run this down quickly. With the last of their possessions packed into a family member's car, Terry and her three children are now officially on the streets. So what's the plan now? Just go and sit there and hopefully they put me somewhere. So you're literally going to go into the council building and see if they can put you somewhere tonight? Yep. A long bus ride later and the family arrive at Croydon Council. But Terry emerges with bad news. They told me now that I have to go and stay on someone's sofa for tonight and then come back in the morning because it was too late to do any sort of paperwork or anything. And they said it was because it was too late? Too late in the day, yeah, to do any sort of paperwork. Yeah, <laughs> I know. So as far as anyone else is concerned, I'm on the streets for the night with my children. Terry's only option now is a friend who's offered the family a sofa for the night. What's happening to the families we have met is happening across the country. Homelessness is rising. It, of course, comes at a huge personal cost to those families and a big financial cost to local councils, who are now spending a record £1.7 billion a year on temporary accommodation. Back in Enfield, it's four hours since Michaela and her kids were evicted from the hotel. And they're still no closer to finding anywhere else. After failing to get through to the council's housing department on the phone, we contacted Enfield Council ourselves on her behalf, and we received a reply within 30 minutes. Then this happened. Okay. Oh, this is private number. Hello? It's Enfield Council. Hello. Hey, how are you doing today? Uh, not very good, thank you. 
with news of a U-turn. They've offered the family a room in another hotel for tonight. It just doesn't make sense. Why couldn't they do this yesterday? Yeah. Why have they allowed this to happen yeah. for my kids to be on the street, for me to have to gather up all my yeah. stuff and move it out? Yeah. And now literally we only have the clothes that are on our backs. We shouldn't be treated like this. We are still humans at the end of the day. And so another hotel room awaits with no end in sight. And the impact of this transient life of uncertainty is unlikely to be temporary. I, mean, I, don't, I don't even know what to say about this. Absolutely hard. It's almost unbelievable, isn't it? Yeah, and frankly, Mary, everyone agrees it's not sustainable. Today, 158 English councils met uh, for an emergency summit online to frankly say they're running out of money to house families that are coming forward to them in their droves who are homeless. They're spending £700 million more this year than they were four years ago. ITV News has seen a letter those councils will write to the Chancellor, Jeremy Hunt, demanding a meeting with him ahead of the autumn statement to say he has to put his hand in his pocket here to, to tackle these issues, to give them more money. And that's effectively what Enfield Council have said to us. And, and about situations like Michaela, they're spending £20 million more this year than they were last year on temporary accommodation. And so when they offer Michaela and others accommodation, no matter how far away it is, how small it is, they only have to offer them one legally. Terry has been moving from hotel to hotel that Croydon Council have been providing her now for several weeks. It's not sustainable. And right, you right to say it's, it's heartbreaking. It really is. The sight of those children. Awful. Dan, thank you. Well, if you are facing homelessness or you want to get in touch about your own housing issue, do email us at housingstories at itv.com.